Hello guys, it's been a while, but it's finally the time for the arena tutorial for the Burgundians, one of the two new sieves we got in the previous uh, DLC. And for now, it's probably the best arena sieve out there, and I'm gonna show you why. The sieve is kind of broken, uh, but well, let's, uh, let's see how to use it while we can, because I'm sure that the sieve is gonna get nerfed sooner or later. Uh, let's see what it got. It's a cavalry civilization, economic upgrades available one age earlier and cost 50% food less. That's insane. Stable technology costs 50% less. That's also very, very good for Arena. Uh, cavalry upgrade available in Castle Age, which is a bit less important. Gunpowder units plus 75 attack, which is also really, really nice. Unique unit is a Costillier and the Flemish Militia. Unique technologies are Burgundy and Vineyards convert half of the food into gold. Farmers slowly generate gold in addition to food. This is very, very nice for both teams on Arena. And Flemish Revolution, which is probably the most broken technology out there right now, upgrades all existing villagers to Flemish Militia, create Flemish Militia from town centers. Team bonus, rarely generate both gold and food, which is also really nice for Arena. Uh, so... This sieve, as we said, has very good hand cannoneers. Cheap paladins, cheap, I mean, the technology is super cheap, and you can get the uh, Cavaliers in Castle Age. It has cannons, it has uh, uh, monks, which are quite nice as well. All Theocracy missing. Costillier is also a very strong unit, even though it's been nerfed. And the Flemish Militia. So, let's see how I think this sieve should be played. I'll be playing FedEx known as El Caracha, and uh, he actually picked Civ, so we are playing Burgundian Mirror. And yeah, let's go over the build order. So the build order, just for like most Civs on Arena, we start with sure. 6 on food, si. then we go on food. The difference about the Burgundians uh, is that they can get economy upgrades 1 age earlier, so they still can get double beat x and horse color in a uh, dark age and you really want to do that on arena or even on all, all maps because a it's cheaper and b it gives you a huge economy boost so as soon as i get the 50 food i'm not doing it now because i'm still queuing villagers i don't want to have idle town center but as soon as i can afford it we'll do double beat x and uh, just before we start making our first farm we want to do horse color Okay, so after we get the boar, foreign wood, we go to berries. We get the boar. Did I forget double bit X? No, I'm doing it now, as you can see. We just double bit X as soon as possible. Get another boar. Split this up a bit. You don't want to lose a scout in a dark age, so. Usually if you didn't lose the deers, you should not engage, that's why I ran away. Lost some HP. We get the deers, attack and labor camp, two on wood on it. Not the best lure, but then two on gold. I usually like to take the forward gold first in case I get pushed and then I can take the gold at the back. This time it's not that critical because, well, even the forward gold is not too forward. But I usually prefer to go on the forward gold to save the other one for later to have a safe goal just in case. <clears throat> so, uh, after going two on gold, we had two more on wood, now we have four on each uh, lumber camp. And because I did the economy upgrades, I actually do one more villager more than usual. I'm gonna go for scout at the Burgundians to fight for the relics. Relics are quite important. And that's why I already did the horse color, so I did the farms. And because I did the horse color double bit X to get her it um, a bit more than uh, 50 food, uh, around 75 food, then I do one more villager just so I won't have uh, idle town center later. I don't have enough food. Uh, so we do the barracks, we have five on berries, we're gonna have sticks after the villager is done with the barracks. And uh, now it's basically standard. We go to Feudal Age. 
stable blacksmiths, you want to go for scouts, fight for the relics. And you can see that I'm already doing a heavy blow uh, in um, on the way to Castle Leech. Because I'm gonna add way more farms once the berries run out. So I have I want them to last longer. That's why I do the heavy blow before uh, Bolso, which I'm also adding now on the way to Castle Leech. Making the scout war, which was really nice. He's also going for the stable. So we keep adding farms. Got his scout, and I was sure that he was gonna go scout as well. So I'm just sending it home or not. I thought I sent it home to heal it, but I'm actually going to scout. So, as you can see, the villagers which were done for the uh, with the berries, I keep adding farms with them more and more, and we keep messing scouts because I know it's gonna be a big scout for now. As we saw earlier, the stables of Burgundians are 50% cheaper. That's why we can get both Light Cup and Husband Tree at the price of Light Cup for your generic sieves. So that's really really nice. You can see I already have Husband Tree queued. And we add the Monastery and we start working on our economy after we fight him. So you can see because the upgrades are so cheap, usually I go for Husband Tree even with generic sieves. But because they saved so much food on the upgrade, on, because the stable is cheaper, I can even afford forging using the Burgundian economy. It's just insane. So I already have Light Cup, Husbandry, and the Forging, and we are at minute 17. And now we are adding the Tomb Centers. So now the plan with Burgundians, let me explain it. The plan is to go Light Cup, fight over the relics, get as many as possible. And then we do a big, big boom. Not your 4 town center, 5 town center boom. We want to go for 7, 8 town center boom. And we want to boom to 200 villagers and do the Flemish Revolution. Uh, so, as you can see, I'll already edit 1 town center on the stone. Just so I'll be able to mine stone and get more town centers as soon as I can afford them. We can compare the light up already. I have bloodlines and plus 1. He has Bloodlines as well, not sure about Husbandry. I'm not scared of uh, Spearman with the uh, light that they have right now. So we have Van Gilger doing houses, also doing the Wilbros if it's cheaper as all the Echo upgrades. And yeah, we boom 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 while fighting for the relics. So how many relics they got? I got two relics and we have one more left to fight over. All this time I keep ending light cap. I keep ending light cap because again, the Burgundian economy is just so strong. Yeah, he also had husbandry. Okay, so we keep ending town centers as I said earlier. Now we are already on five town centers. Doing all the echo upgrades, adding more town centers. You want to have as many farms as possible. You can keep producing villagers from all these town centers, and later, you once you do the Flemish Revolution, you have to reboom, right? Because Flemish Revolution is one big push, but you need to have a big economy behind it. That's why we are adding all these town center, so we'll be able to produce villagers. Uh, once we are done with Flemish Revolution, we want to get all those villagers back as soon as possible. <clears throat> so already how many? Four, five, six, seven town centers I have already. With all the echo upgrades, one age earlier. I think I had all the echo upgrades except rock rotation. Okay, we are on the way to Imp. I did the university because when you do Flemish Revolution, uh, you need to push. You need to use the power spike and push to damage. And uh, you want to have siege to take buildings down with uh, with your push. Uh, Rebs is not the best solution in my opinion. So having traps and cannons behind your Flemish militia is the best. And that's why I did the university to add chemistry early on, to add cannons. If we check villager count, we can see that he has actually had with the villager number. So this is how usually <laughs> uh, Burgundians were played these days. It's just big booms in the Flemish Revolution. He has eight town centers. 
I have seven if I counted correctly. And yeah, we are doing all the upgrades for the militia. For the militia line, for the infantry line, I mean. Conscription, chemistry. And boom into 200 villagers. You want to do Flemish Revolution? Want to have around, well, not 200, I want to have like around 190 villagers and like 10 siege weapons, cannons, traps, and so. That's uh, so why I also want you to get rid of the light kill because Flemish Revolution is stronger than them. I think I sacrificed them before the Flemish Revolution. Let's see. Keep having some centers. Yeah, I just sacrificed that, I didn't care. But Flemish Revolution is already done. And you see I have traps, I'm doing cannons. And now you have to go around your base and gather all those uh, Flemish militia. That's the most annoying part, that you need to click on your idle military button often. And behind that you need to start making builders from all the, all the town centers. With a gather points on farms, gather points on gold and wood, manage your economy. You basically start from the beginning with seven villagers. Uh, so you use, uh, you send the Flemish uh, militia forward, he did basically the same, uh, but you bring cannons behind it and you start pushing these buildings. You can see castle is down, the game is lagging with 200 mil uh, with 400 military together, but well, it happens. And now it's just a question of taking good fights, you don't want to have small groups fighting big groups. You want to use the teach to shoot at his mass uh, military. Try to do the damage. He was going for the same thing. But something I didn't do here and you should do, I should have done it earlier. Look at my economy, I still have tons of resources behind me. And I should have had ranges earlier. I should have had ranges before I did Flemish Revolution, so I could have added hand cannons behind this. And that was my mistake that I didn't do that. But you can see we're both basically rebooming now. Also, we have the second in technology, which I think should be used uh, in posting. There's still tons of gold uh, left, so I think that one I didn't do this game. Technologies that convert your food into gold, but in posting you should definitely go for it once gold runs out. Also I have three relics, one relic more, and they generate food as well, so that's kinda nice. And yeah, we start adding hand cannoneers, and this was the my turning point in this game, because you can see that he's only, only doing cannons, and he has only Flemish uh, militia, and I have Flemish militia and hand cannoneers. And Herkinoneers are quite great behind the Flemish Militia versus Flemish Militia, so... And those cannons are super expensive, so you cannot really fight versus Flemish Militia with them, while well, I can just send the Herkinoneers back. All the cannons are down, it was tons of gold for him, which is lost. Meanwhile, we keep rebooming, you can see that we already both recovered to 85 villagers. But still, you need like uh, to go back to 120, 30 villagers at least uh, to get your economy running. But I already have uh, 60 farmers, so that's more than enough actually. Just need way more on the wood. Uh, so after we do the switch to hand cannoneers, we can also always add Flemish uh, militia from the town centers. After we done this unique technology, we can always produce them. Yeah, so the Burgundia Tenkaniers with the extra damage that they do, X plus 25%, is super, super nice versus Flemish Militia. And it was his mistake, so Tenkaniers is a match of that excess, and that is correct. The Tenkaniers behind the Flemish Militia is just insane. And it just shows how broken this series at the moment. Uh, I'm sure they will nerf it. How? I don't know. If they take it away from them, the Flemish Revolution. Uh, I don't know how they will do it. But, uh, well, this is how I think you should play them at the moment, at their current state, at their current OP state. 
So hope you enjoyed this video boys and I'll see you in the next ones. Bye bye.